Okay, this is going to go kind of quick. Uh, mainly I wanted to show the last piece of DJI Drone ID, which uh, is now, well, everything is in the latest Dragon OS Focal R24 uploaded along with uh, some other new things you can see uh, in the README on the right there. I'm just going to go hit a couple of them. Uh, but first, let's finish out the DJI Drone ID. So in the last, well, the first video, if you follow along, you should be able to capture an IQ, preferably the bursts that I mentioned in the temp directory. Uh, in, in my case, I had to run the full IQ file through uh, Octave, which uh, produced uh, frames. And so what you see in front of you is a frame, uh, a slightly modified uh, frame, so it's not got my location and all that stuff in it from the, from the drone where it was at, but that is essentially what you will get to the screen. So you're looking at that and you're thinking, well, what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm sure the DJI Drone ID uh, repo either already has a tool or will soon. I think it mentioned about deframing. I I'm assuming maybe that's what the tool is going to do is going to turn this into something human readable. But in the meantime, uh, a uh, individual contributed a file, which I've stuck in the user source DJI Drone ID folder here. I'll go ahead and open it up. You can have a look at it here to see uh, oop, uh, who who contributed this. Uh, it's in Python. You can see the CRC tables and you can come down look at the functions and how the conversion is happening and uh, the end result uh, ends up getting you the lat long of the drone, the home location, the phone, all this stuff, the altitude, the heading, serial number, so on and so forth. And really all you have to provide it is a um, frames.txt file and that's covered in the main and so just encourage you to look through this uh, really cool um, piece of code here doing all this. And so all you need to do is take however many frames are printed out for you copy them just make sure it includes a frame there create a new frames.txt file paste that uh, frame or frames in and so we can minimize this and so all we need to do is python 3 dgi decode and let's see home dragon desktop frames and voila there is the human readable drone ID information which has the uh, state info serial number uh, longitude latitude height altitude all that product type everything and uh, and what this will do is it'll also calculate the CRC and tell you if you uh, uh, had a pass or fail of course it says fail here because I uh, had some help like just manipulating this and throwing some uh, information in there but that's what the end result is going to be okay so uh, and I would say that's how it works now uh, but what it looks like is things will become more automated may be uh, the decoding and the frames generation will happen right in GNU radio and and uh, however the project's going to progress uh, I, I would just encourage keep an eye out there but if you download and run Dragon OS, that is how you can do it now in uh, Dragon OS. All right, uh, quickly, we'll take a look at, uh, I had already opened it up. So let me think here. Let me just remove so it'll open up how you will see it. F4 EXB, and this is actually the folder that holds your configuration files for SDR Angel. So. Uh, worst case scenario, it's not opening, something's crazy, you could always, like, worst case, delete this folder. Just make sure you're deleting the right thing. So this is SDR Angel version 7. And you're going to notice right away, hey, where's what? Am, where's everything I'm used to? So it's went to this workspace deal here where uh, at least there's a workspace open right now. And so what we'll do is... We'll get this looking like uh, like it did before. We're going to add a RX device. That's this little thing up here. You got a transmit that you can add to. I've got an RTL SDR plugged in. We'll open that up, and so we're back to somewhat looking like we did before. The cool thing is is the workspace is adjustable. You can lay it out however you want. 
Uh, something that didn't immediately jump out to me is where was the ch where do you add the channels? Well, it's right here to the right of the star on the uh, where you've got your source at. So we can add a channel here. We could do broadcast FM demodulator. Um, you can do a stacking uh, here. There's a stack sub windows automatically stack. You've got where you can add your features, which if you recall before, uh, channels was kind of added over in the upper right. Features were in the in the uh, bottom, so it's all kind of consolidated up in the corner here. Uh, let's see, whatever we can just do a map. You see how that's automatically kind of. Uh, laid out there and then you can you know change it as needed you could have two receivers on here really however you want you could create a new workspace create as many as those if you want each have them doing something different keep in mind the API behind the scenes has probably changed so if you're trying to do uh, remote control of SDR Angel you might take that in cons uh, consideration one thing I do like is the fact that um, Oh, let me see. Uh, let's open up another channel. The channel analyzer no longer uh, on 20.04 uh, uh, causes a, uh, a crash, I guess I'd say, in the uh, closing of it. And so let's see, we'll just turn the SDR, RTL SDR on. Everything else functions uh, similar to probably what you're used to. Here we got some game. We can see that the uh, channel analyzer is working. I can close it without uh, crashing that. Broadcast FM. So we got audio. Uh, that's just a, a quick. There's a lot of things that you can do in SDR Angel. Uh, I just wanted to show. So it's not a surprise when you first open it up. You should be able to exit out and save that for the next time you open it up. And I think I'll cut it uh, a little short here um, and show one more thing, which is uh, some big improvements to SDR for space. So if we look in user source SDR for space, uh, you can see I've got a readme there, a text file that kind of explains how uh, I had some help building the SOAPY modules in the op directory that are special for SDR for space. Uh, so really to get running here, all you got to do is do a source settings. And if you look at settings, you'll see what that's doing. That applies to this terminal window that you have open. So if you close it, you want to run it again, you need to run this again. This just kind of changes where uh, Soapy is being looked at. So we'll do that. Now the other cool thing is the licensing is uh, working. So if you get a license from the SDR for Space people and you put a license.dat right in this directory, the uh, SDR VM will look for that as you can see right there and that'll unlock some more uh, features and let's see so I've got a readme here just highlighting a few notes that I'll run through here real quick um, big thing is you want to make sure in your uh, settings.js file here which is in the Dragon OS folder I'm going to set it up for the RTL SDR, so I changed the sample rate to 2E6, the driver to RTL SDR. Uh, the default frequency is fine. Uh, GNU plot, I've changed to GNU plot dash X11. And I know I'm going kind of quick, but save that. And if we look in the RX folder, uh, you'll notice because I've ran it before the settings.js is there as well so what it'll do is it'll copy that over into those directories and so you're either going to have to double check that you 
don't have things out of sync so just check them or if you delete in the subdirectory here subdirectories here the settings that settings.js should be copied over so we'll take a look in uh, spectrum in uh, wide spectrum you'll see there's uh, settings there as well so everything looks to match be matched up because I've ran this before but just double check that and so what we're gonna do is uh, well first you'll notice that there's a uh, new directories, dmod, dvb, t, monitor, pog site channels, there's a lot that's been added, subband, and you can go down in and read on each one of those and I'll probably um, dedicate some more time to this but what I'm going to show is a um, a sample uh, boot JS that's going to do a little bit of everything so if we look at the JS here it was originally set up for the Pluto SDR but I have it uh, set up for the RTL SDR now so it's going to plot a simple spectrum it's going to plot a 20 megahertz wide spectrum and then it'll capture some IQ samples and open up in spectrum automatically and then it will uh, capture another portion of the spectrum for 20 seconds and uh, capture the subband there and it'll open up in spectrum again and then finally it will um, start receiving uh, like IQ files until I hit uh, control C alright so we don't have to make sim links all over the place like I've did in the past you just do sudo sdrvm and if we do a dash D now we can just specify the directory which we want to go into the RX uh, I should have mentioned there's a sat folder too that has some other scripts in it and I think it's going to uh, continue to grow to get more and more scripts and of course you can make your own so we'll do the dash D for the directory dash F I think it is F and we'll do the boot dot JS so this should automatically run through now don't be surprised uh, when you I noticed while recording this um, that I used the uh, incorrect Lime suite to build the Lime SDR uh, soapy module so you'll get a warning about that um, I'll, I'll show I'll, I'll make sure I fix that in the future uh, and if you look at my text file you can kind of figure out how to build the correct version I think the line suite that's in Dragon OS 20 or uh, focal is 20.07 and I mistakenly built uh, 20.10 module specifically for this doesn't affect anything else but you will notice it here I just have uh, fixed it a second ago so anyways we run this you're gonna see it's gonna do everything automatically plots the simple spectrum bam right there from the RTL SDR close it out it saves it in the temp PNG directory along with a CSV file now it's gonna do the 20 megahertz spectrum automatically And once this is finished, it'll pop up another plot. And we can see the frequencies that it detected. The average level detection trigger detected 7. And it tells you the frequencies that were detected and the levels that they were detected at. Close this out. It'll continue on. It'll capture the IQ samples. It'll open up in Spectrum automatically, so you can look at that, what it captured. And then if we close that out, it'll continue on. And it'll do a 20-second capture. And it gives some information here as far as what it's doing. Once it 20 seconds is complete, it should open in Spectrum again. Okay, and then you can see the uh, final step here. And again, this stuff's all being put in temp, so you can look at it later. Uh, perform a continuous capture, and then it'll output the DDC CF32. Okay. And 
right so now it's starting that capture it's writing to disk and I'll just hit uh, control C and if we change into the temp we'll see the subband the CSV files the PNG we've got the um, plots the uh, DDC CF32 and the capture CF32 so it's all there and uh, that's just a quick little glimpse of uh, some of the things that you can do um, I'll just point out too, I did include uh, the SIG over injector in a sample and user source. Uh, let me think SIG over injector. I encourage you, you need to read the README on both sides, but uh, essentially all you have to do is you do make directory build, which I've already done. Change into build, sudo cmake. I've already done that. And uh, or at least for this video you have to take care of this I didn't build it for for anyone to do make now don't do make and install just make sure you pay attention to the directions uh, I've not fully tested it but I have confirmed both build and so each serves a different purpose in order to do what it describes uh, on the sig over page and the uh, uh, project all right I think um, I think that's it all right Oh, one other thing. So the 5.15 kernel is included, but I noticed that uh, I had some issues with um, I kind of jumped the gun on the HWE kernel not being at 5.15 yet and just uh, pulled in 5.15. So if you want to run that, you need the headers. You're going to have to look for the headers. Um, but uh, hopefully here in about a month or so, that 5.15 kernel will just be the norm for 20.04.5, I think it is. And then Hopefully the NVIDIA drivers uh, will match up. Right now I just installed the uh, HW, or well, actually the 5.4, the standard kernel, um, just for the purposes of NVIDIA. But other than that, uh, it should be fine. All right.